Hi all, thanks for jumping on my video. This is going to be the first video of many that I'll be doing in a new video series I like to call 10 Minute Thursdays Yearbook Edition. So each week I'll be covering a new yearbook topic within the industry, whether that be photography, interviewing, design, and many more. So for this week's video we're going to be doing photo editing basics in Photopea. So let's get started. I have Photopea already open on my computer. The first thing you'll notice is that it can take PSD files as well as RAW files, which is great. But for today's example, we're just going to use JPEGs. So I'm going to come over here to File, Open. I'm going to select my four JPEGs. And there we go. So we'll start off with this one right here, the basketball one. So the one thing I don't really like right here is this little area right here. It's kind of distracting. I don't know what it is. And so I kind of want to take it out. So if I zoom in, I can then come over here to my Spot Healing Brush tool and then I can start clicking around this area. What your spot healing brush tool is doing, it is taking the surrounding area and the background and trying to replace it with what's around there. So it's replacing that little grate it kind of looked like or a crate and replacing it with the surrounding area. So I'm gonna zoom out a little and there we go, kind of replaced it. It does look a little dirty, so I would go in and like clean this up a little more, do some more of the spot healing, maybe even brush it a little more, but already I like that a lot more than before. And if you're done with that, all you're going to do is go to File, Export as a JPEG, and you're done. But the other thing I want to fix in this image is also the exposure. It's really dark, and so I'm going to go over to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to bring up my Levels. And these are your blacks. These are your whites, and these are your mid-tones, also known as your grays. And so if I adjust my blacks to the right-hand side, it's going to make my image darker. If I bring my whites to the left-hand side, it's going to make my image brighter. And if I use my mid-tones and move it to the left, it's going to bring my shadows up. And if I go to the right, it's going to darken my shadows. So I'm going to bring up my shadows just a little bit, and then I'm going to bring up the whites as well. There we go. And so I can actually use this little eye to see the before and after, and that looks so much better. And even that background kind of disappeared within there as well. And so once I'm done with this, I'm going to go to File, Export As, a JPEG. Make sure it's at 100% quality, and then you're going to hit Save and save your new version. And this will save either in your Downloads folder, your desktop, wherever it is on your computer. So let's close out of this one. Next thing I'm going to show you in this image is how to do colorization and duotones. So let's say I want this to be a completely different color. There are many ways to do this. One of the ways is by going to layer, new adjustment layer, and going to black and white. And then having colorize checked off and then actually changing this black to be like a red, a blue, a green, whatever color you want it to be. So let's say I want a red and then I can adjust these colors. You'll notice it's making some adjustments, and even though it says red and it's not doing it everything, it's actually taking from the original photo. So if I was to turn off this eye, you notice there's red there and red there. And so when I turn this back on, it's making adjustments to those specific reds. And that'll do the same, like if I was to do the blues, it'll do the skies, it'll do the jean, same thing with the cyan. So it's going to take whatever similar colors were to the original photo. So that's if you really want to make those adjustments, make those edits. So let's delete this layer. Another way to do this is you can actually go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, and you can hit color eyes. And then you're going to bring up your saturation and then just adjust your hues. So in this situation, you don't have that full control like you did when I converted it to black and white where you can really adjust each one. All you can do is select a color and then adjust how bright you want that color. So I honestly would recommend doing the black and white for way because you can have more creativity, more control of the image. And then the last way to do it is, let's delete this layer, is to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and we're going to do gradient map. This is the way to do it if you want to do multiple colors. So let's say I want to do this red and green. I get two different colors. That looks pretty bad. Let's try this purple and orange. That looks a little better. And let's say I don't want to do this purple and orange. I want to do different colors. I can click on here and then change these colors. I can change this purple to be blue instead, green, and you can kind of see which ones are going to work out better. So 
maybe doing this like dark red with that orange. And so you can have two different colors, you can have multiple colors. I can even reverse this so you can see the difference. But if you want to combine two colors, then I would use the gradient map feature. So let's move on to the next photo. Next one is the student life one. The white balance is kind of off. It's a little orange, yellowish. So we want to get rid of that. So the easiest way to do that is to go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. And in this situation, we're not going to colorize, but instead we're going to come over here to master yellow. And the reason we're choosing yellow is we want to take away some of that yellow in this background. And so I'm going to reduce the saturation. And as I reduce it, you start noticing some of that yellow going away. But you don't want to do it too much because then yellow is completely gone and it really distorts damage. And that goes with any of the colors in the range. So I'm just going to bring it up a little more. And then I'm going to bring up this lightness. And there we go. That looks so much better. Like I said, just hit this little eye to see a before and after. Awesome. And then same thing, you'd go to File, Export as a JPEG if you're happy with the image. And let's go to our final image and finally get down to cutouts, which is the fun thing about yearbooks. It's always fun to put a cutout within a yearbook. And so there are multiple ways to do this. One of the cool ways that you can do it now is using this selection tool. And when I click and drag, it's going to select this area and really find those defined lines and try to get it as close as possible. So if you notice, kind of got messed up around the hair, eyebrows, eyelashes, like all this area right here, it kind of got messed up. And so I want to fix that later. And so what I'll do is do the mask layer first. And yes, I know the eye is gone, but I can actually come over here because I made a mask layer and I'm on the mask layer. I can use my brush feature and brush this back on. And the only way you can brush it is if you're on the mask layer, as well as if your colors are white and black. That way you can continue to make those adjustments. And so I can keep going. My main recommendation when doing cutouts is to add a new layer and make it the background color of whatever color you're going to use in the yearbook. So you're going to click over here. It'll either be on the gradient tool or the paint bucket, and you want the paint bucket. And let's say my color of my yearbook spread is going to be this like blue, but like a lighter blue. We'll go like with that. I'm going to paint this background, and there we go. That way you can actually see if this cutout is clean, if it's going to look good on the spread. And then I'm going to change this back to be my white. And go back to my mask layer. And that's where I'm going to zoom in and actually start cleaning that up. Like getting all those little ridges there. I need to bring back some of the chin. And so this is all the little details you would do. But overall, like this looks pretty decent on a blue background. So that's why I always love doing this layer section. The other way you can do a cutout, so if you aren't going to use this object selection tool, because sometimes it doesn't work that well, so you can also use the lasso tool or the magnetic lasso. So with the lasso, you're actually going to go in and hold down and start drawing around. So this is a little more tedious because you're drawing manually, and then it will select that area. I kind of like using the magnetic lasso just because if I click on one dot, and then give it a sec while it's figuring out where this area is. It's going to start selecting magnetically around the edges. And so I just keep going. And just keep going. And so if you notice, it's going around the edges. And if I want to make my own edge, I can just click and it'll start doing its own. And then same thing, you would just click on the first dot and then that'll kind of end it. And then you use your mask layer to get rid of it. So one other thing I'm going to show you is how to do selective color because those are fun. So let's say I want to just keep this blue shirt. I'm going to use the lasso tool just because I like this one a little bit. And so I'm going to go over here, go down here. And then I'm going to come over here. And there we go. And so one thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to duplicate this layer. And then on this top layer is where I'm going to apply the mask. And then I'm going to actually take this image, the bottom one, and go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Black and White. That way that's a black and white image, and the top one is a color one. And then this is where I'd go in and start cleaning up, bringing back whatever I need. 
Remember, you want to be on your mask layer. So bring back some of that shirt. And then if I need to get rid of, like I got some of the skin color here, I'm going to get rid of it with my eraser tool. And there you go. You got a new image. And so one thing to note is when you're doing a cutout, so let's say this cutout, you're going to go to File, Export As, and save it as a PNG. PNG will keep that transparent background, unlike a JPEG, which will create a white box. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed the basic tutorial on photo editing with PhotoP. And if you ever have an idea for a future video, please comment below. Have a great day.